scroll through social media and you'll find no shortage of posts filled with anger, racism, hatred, and sometimes they're from your own family members. But before you hit comment or reply, be careful. There's a right way and a wrong way to use words online. Daniel Darling is the author of nine books, a pastor, and senior vice president for communications at National Religious Broadcasters. He says social media was made to bring us together, but few things have driven us further apart. In his latest book, Away With Words, Darling helps Christians consider how to use words to accomplish good and to realize that boldness and civility are not at odds. Oh, Daniel, timing is everything, and you are on time. Welcome to the 700 Club. It's good to have you with us. <laughs> well, thank you for having me, and uh, glad to be here today to talk to you about this important topic. It is an important topic. We have lost talking face-to-face, -face, and it is really hard to convey tone in an email or a text. So how do we handle everyday communication in this digital age? Well, I think we have to have... Uh, two thoughts with this. I think, first of all, we have to recognize that, you know, we are in the 21st century and this is uh, how we communicate today. We're, we're not going to go back to the 1950s. We're not going to all suddenly become, you know, Amish. Uh, and so we have to ask ourselves, how do we do this? Well, how do we steward our words online? And at the same time, I think we also have to recognize that when we do communicate digitally, when we do communicate on social media, that we are in public, uh, that our conversations are being mediated through screens and devices, and it's not the same as face-to-face. -face. And so we have to be wise about the things that we post, and we have to uh, obey what the Scripture says about our words, even when we're online, even when it's so easy to, to uh, press send. Yeah. So many arguments online stem from the fact that people are wrong, at least wrong in our opinion. And then mm -hmm. the response often to that is filled with so much vindictiveness. How do we respond in situations where we feel people really are inaccurate or wrong and we want to say something to write that? Well, I do think we should speak up against evil, against injustice, uh, speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. I think of what Peter says in 1 Peter 3.15 that we should have an answer for every person for the hope that lies within us, but do it with gentleness and, and kindness. And so I think we can be both courageous and civil. And I think the way we do that is understanding that the people with whom we're interacting, the people with whom we disagree uh, are human beings. They're not avatars or pixels that we can just crush, but they're human beings made in the image of God. And so even if they are wrong, um, they are not the sum total of their arguments or their opinions, they're whole people. And so seeing them as human beings, I think, helps us respond in a way that is courageous and stands up for the truth, but also uh, does it in a way that recognizes their dignity. You differentiate between what you call tribalism and community. What's the difference between the two? Well, community is good. You know, human beings uh, were, were made by God. We're wired by God for community. We are joiners. We need to be part of uh, groups and associations and tribes. I mean, this is really what helps society flourish, um, whether it's, uh, you know, being a member of your church, which I think is the, the most important tribe to be part of, but uh, local associations and clubs are very important and vital for human flourishing. Um, but there's a difference between community and tribalism. Tribalism is, is joining groups and tribes, not because of shared uh, affiliations and shared interests, but because of shared hatreds. Like we are part of this tribe because we hate the other tribe more. And I think tribalism uh, is is bad for Christians because it keeps us from learning and listening from other people. It keeps us kind of in a echo chamber, in a, in a silo where uh, we're only uh, fellowshipping and being with people who totally agree with us. And I think the internet at times can incentivize this. And we have to, as Christians, break out of this and be willing to hear from a variety of voices and um, be open to learning and even changing our minds. You share in the book, uh, Away With Words, that you've recently published. You talk about 10 commandments for speech. Can you share a few of those with us? 
Yeah, I think a, f- a few of these are really important. I think, first of all, we have to understand that the Bible uh, really um, cares about our speech. The Bible commends good speech. It's not just enough that we are on the right side of things. The Bible also cares about the way that we use speech. I think the other, uh, a couple other thoughts to think about speech are this, that um, that uh, speech is, uh, there's different ways to speak and there's different times to speak. There's a time to speak up and there's a time to be quiet. Sometimes courage looks like speaking up. Sometimes it means being quiet as Jesus was at times before his accusers. Uh, we also need to think about speech uh, that uh, not every medium is is the best way to to uh, have confrontation. Some conversations are too complicated for digital mediums, and so we need to take them offline or a phone call or things like that. Uh, I also think we need to understand that um, merely saying what's on our mind, just you know, I say it like it is, and I and I I just say whatever's on my mind. It's not necessarily commended by Scripture. There's a lot of verses in Proverbs that talk about a fool and a fool that just kind of says says whatever comes to mind. That uh, thinking through things, um, being quick to listen, uh, as James says, slow to speak, slow to rage. In this uh, digital age, we might say, let's be quick to get the whole story, yeah. slow to post, slow to internet rage. <laughs> Absolutely. Is there ever a time that we just log off? I do think so. I mean, again, the, uh, we are in a digital age. Uh, this is how people communicate. And so I do think we need to be thinking about how we can bring joy to uh, social media and how we can steward this well. But I do think there are it's important for us to not just live online, that uh, the things we do online are important, but that's not all there is to life, that we need to take digital Sabbaths. We need to log off at times. We need to put our phones down and really have face-to-face conversations. You know, God has created us as embodied human beings. We're not just, you know, as some people say, we're not just brains on sticks. We're not just souls. We're souls and bodies. Mm -hmm. And so embodied uh, communication face-to-face, I think, is really important. And I think we're seeing uh, the importance of that during this global pandemic where we've been forced to be sort of separated uh, from each other and communicate via digital means. There's a growing hunger, I think, and a longing for uh, in-person, face-to-face um, communication for which we were made. Absolutely. Daniel, thank you for sharing your insights. I want you all to know you can get more great advice by getting Daniel's book. It's called Away With Words. It's available nationwide. Thanks for being with us, Daniel. Great to have you today. Thank you so much for having me on. It's, it's, it's been a joy.